Nikki. Today is the day that we are going to bind our signatures into our covers. Remember these? We've been making these and working on these. We've been working on our signatures, which are right up there. And uh, we're going to put it all together today. Um, so uh, I am going to, let's see, let's just get right into this. Let's show you. I'm going to move these over here. I will show you the things that I have brought along <laughs> that I have out on my desk that I use for binding. So if you are brand new to this, let me just say that you can go on Amazon or probably other sites too, but Amazon's pretty accessible and buy what's called like a basic book binding kit. That's what I bought back in the day when I first started this. And this is the same all, A-W-L, all that I had got in that kit. And it's the one that I keep using. I actually got another one, um, but this one, because it's smaller, it fits my small hands and it works just fine. It's still very pokey. Um, in it, you will usually get some waxed linen thread as well, which is what I use to bind almost all of my books exclusively. I think it uh, stands the test of time very good, and because it's waxed, it holds the knot very well, so this is pretty much what I use. You'll also get some, um, a little vial with some needles in here, binding needles. However, um, this isn't what I use, and I'll, t I'll address that in a second. Uh, and then you usually get some binder clips in there. And these are the, you know, big giant binder clips. These will hold our signatures. Um, this you don't get in there, but uh, I also have just some plain old jumbo um, paper clips. And we'll, I'll show you how I use those when we get to it. And then I also have some of my scrap cutoffs of uh, book board. And I'll show you why how we use those too. So I'm going to move all of this back up here. And now that I said that I don't use these, I'm gonna go right behind me and grab my one that I do use because <laughs> I forgot to pull it out. This is the one that I do use. It is, um, it is a, let's see. It's like a needle that you would use for sewing your knitting together or something. It's a little more blunt on the end. It's not pokey. so. I can do this and not poke myself. And I'll I'll explain why I use this one. It's easier to explain when we're actually in the process. Um, I also have out my handy dandy PVA, which I'm getting low on, <laughs> my plate and my brush. And then I have a piece of um, fabric, muslin. I've got some lace here and I've got a little bit of cheesecloth and that we'll be using when it comes to um, our hardcover book. So I think, let's see, maybe we should bind our soft cover journal first so I can show you the pamphlet stitch. Also, it'll just warm us up because the, uh, the other one requires way more math. Actually, because of drying time, maybe let's do this one first. So um, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Um, and then we'll be old pros by the time we get ready to bind our soft cover. So these are the two end papers. I'm gonna set these aside for right now. We don't need them. What we need is this. So this was our binding paper that we made. So it's Tyvek, right? That we attach to the same paper that we're going to bind our book into and that fits right in here into our signature and it won't be so rounded like that it'll actually fit right in there nicely and that will be what holds our book together so I'm going to set that up here and now we're going to take a look at measuring so this is where we're math right and I know some of you said hey I didn't sign up for math well you know neither did I so luckily this is easy math. <laughs> um, what we want to do is if you, if you remember, we've got some space in between our um, cover and our spine. Okay. This side I made a little bit smaller by accident, but that's okay. This side is a little wider. What we want to measure is 
the absolute spine. And now we made it two and a half inches, but we want to make sure that with the tape or the Tyvek, whichever way you did it, that it is exactly still two and a half. Now, mine looks like it's just slightly, slightly over on this side, but by such a small distance. And I'm going to measure a couple places. Yeah, by such a small distance that it's not a big deal. Um, and so what I went ahead and did, and this is just for ease of showing you, is I cut, this is just a piece of note card, and I cut it to the exact width. So this is to show, easier to show you. Um, and so you see when I close it up, there, let's see, oh, here comes a big truck or something, big log truck. Uh, when I close it up, it doesn't gap or anything. It fits flat and nice and neat inside there. And the covers don't, you know, they come up and meet it, but they don't cause it to bubble or anything. So that means it's exactly the right width. And so when I measure this, it is exactly two and a half inches. So these are the markings that I put on here is uh, by quarter inch. And um, these are the same down here. The reason I did that is because, uh, to show you, I, I listen, I have been prepping this to try and think of how is the best way to teach this to you guys. So what we need to do is, um, because most of the time I just do this by rote, you know, and I just kind of go about it. No, no two times are ever exactly the same when I do this, but I'm going to attempt to show you in the most concise manner. So two and a half inches on my little note card here. So what we need to do is take this and transfer it here so we know exactly where to put some folds in so that it will fold nicely here. We're not gonna rely on it just kind of bending once we've glued it in. We wanna put a fold in so it's nice and precise, okay? We're gonna use our scoreboard to do that. I'm gonna set the cover aside. Actually, before I set the cover aside, let me Grab my signatures and I'll show you one more thing here. Whoops. Oh, I got something stuck on something. Okay, let me show you one more thing here. The reason I made it taller and made the things stick out there, whoo, the pin, is so that I could show you this. The way we're gonna figure out where to mark to sew our signatures in, right? Because we have a two and a half inch binding. So we need to know like where we're gonna make marks to sew the three signatures in. If you have five signatures, you need to know where you're gonna sew your five signatures in. If you have eight, you need to know where you're gonna put your eight signatures. When I'm doing three or a couple signatures like this, the way I like to do it is put my signatures in and see when I hold the book closed at kind of a, uh, about neutral position here, right? So where the spine is even with the front about, where do these signatures want to fall? And so that's why I made these little marks here. So let me see how I can show you this on camera. There, okay. We can kind of see that, right? <laughs> so see where the signatures want to fall. This one is gonna go, obviously, since we have three, the middle one will go right in the middle. K of our two and a half um, inches. But the other two, they don't wanna start all the way over here on the edges. They wanna come in a little bit. So they're in about a half inch on either side and that's just where they kinda naturally wanna fall. So that is where we're gonna put them to make sure. So we're gonna come in a half inch and a half inch on either side and then we'll put the middle signature right down the middle, okay? So now I've got my pencil. We're not going to draw on the front side, okay? We're going to draw on the back side because you're going to see this, you know, middle portion of this, and we don't want little pencil marks and stuff. So we're going to do it on the back. Luckily, we've got this nice white canvas back here to work on. So I'm going to measure and see how long this is. And it's yep, just about 12 inches because we used the full length of that sheet of paper. So I'm gonna mark my center. And then I'm gonna mark 
two and a half inches on either side, or not two and a half, or this is two and a half, right? So I need to mark one and a quarter on each side. So seven, and then here's a quarter. So that's one and a quarter, and then one and a quarter. I should be doing this with a pen. Ooh, dangerous. But a pen, so you guys can maybe see better, huh? Yeah, maybe. Well, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. So we're going to put our marks in there. Okay, so now we've got two and a half inches. We've got one, two and a half inches. So this should fit right inside there, which it does. Now... I want to make one more set of those marks so I can draw some lines. Oops. So six, and then one and a half to that side, and one and a half to this side. So now I'm going to mark my two sides. I'm just going to line up my two lines that I made. Okay, now we have our two and a half inch spine transferred onto our binding paper. So we also know where our center signature wants to go because that's going to be the center there, right? And we're going to put our center signature in there. But now we need a line on this side and a line on this side. So when I go like this and double check, yep, this is exactly two and a half from here to here, which is what we want. And then half of that would be one and a quarter, which is where this line falls, which is awesome. But then we also want, we want a half inch in on this side. Remember, that's where we decided it fell. And a half inch in on this side. So now we know where our three signatures are going to be sewn in. And that leaves us some space on this side before the fold, and some space on this side before the fold, and then room in between the signatures. And hold on, let me turn off my sound on my phone because whoops. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to go down to this set of marks. And I'm going to put those, I'm going to put these marks in again, in a half inch and in a half inch. Okay. Now I'm going to draw three more lines where my signatures go. If this is going too fast for you, um, by all means, ask me questions in the comments. I'm, I want to go quick enough that it, this is not just totally boring for people who know how to do this. And I definitely don't want to treat you guys like dummies who don't know how to do simple measuring. Although that's what I feel like most of the time. Okay, so now we have our lines where our three signatures are going to go in. Okay, so our three signatures are going to fall. This is where the folds are going to be. And then our three signatures will fall in the middle. Now, the other, or the other thing we need to note on the back of this is where to punch the holes. Now, I do a five-hole pamphlet stitch. A lot of people do a three-hole pamphlet stitch. Again, we've had this discussion on here many times during the series that I do the most, and I just like to feel like everything is really good and caught in there. Um, these journals don't have a whole lot of smaller things, like the small little half pages or book pages or envelopes or things that I sew into the signatures. But some of my journals, I sew lots of smaller pieces in, you know, into the actual signature. When you do that, you want to make sure that every one of them is getting caught really well so that there's no chance of it slipping out or anything. If I were to just do a three-hole pamphlet stitch, like, you know, one on top, one on bottom, and one in the middle, if I had a small envelope, it, it you know, technically it could not get caught with a stitch and it could fall out. You mean you would be able to pull it out. So um, I just like to do five for that reason. 
So what we need to do is mark five holes on each one of our binding marks here. So in order to do that, and I like to do this, you know, evenly spaced, our signatures, if we recall, are, I believe, exactly seven inches, okay? So these are seven inches. Now our binding paper is seven and a quarter. So we have to take into account that there is a quarter inch or an eighth inch. And you know, to all my metric people, I apologize if this is gonna be confusing or difficult because I'm working in inches, but um, that's how it is. <laughs> Anyway, we have to take into account that there is a slight bit on the bottom and the top that's gonna make this page taller than our signature, right? So let's put a, an actual demonstration of that. Um, can you see how there's just a hair here and a hair here that is makes this page taller than this page? So because of that, we wanna make sure that we take that into account. We don't wanna put our hole too low because then it's, you know, it's gonna be right at the edge. And we don't wanna to bind too close to the edge down here because then it has the chance of ripping out this way. We don't want that to happen. So what we wanna do is, you know, move it in quite a bit. So what I typically do is go in a half an inch on the bottom and a half an inch on the top. And that's where I put my first hole. So because this is, um, a quarter inch longer, I'm gonna do a half inch and an eighth, right? So I'm just gonna add a little eighth on. So I'm gonna go in a half inch. Oops, make sure I'm on the actual line. <laughs> I was just putting dots out in the middle of the page. Okay, so half inch here and a half inch and an eighth there, okay? Then I'm gonna find center. So the center of seven and a quarter, seven would be three and a half, a quarter would be um, this extra, well, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about the quarter inch right here because it's fine. So three and a half would be the center Okay, so we, there's three of our holes. Now we need to split the difference here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, about 12 uh, quarter inches. So half of that would be six inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I, I like to because I don't like to do the math. I don't want to do math. I don't want to five minus one and four eighths. I don't want to do all of that. Four eighths would be a half, by the way. I do know that. Instead, I like to use the measurements or the lines here as like units. And this is, I think, comes out of me teaching my kids in special ed to look at things in a different way that makes easier sense. So I look at these quarter inches as units. And I know that there are 12 in between here and here, roughly. But then, so tw half of 12 is six. So I one, two, three, four, five, six units. And I go here. So maybe that helps with you people who use metric. <laughs> and then I want six here, one. And since I counted six from the center here, I'm gonna count six from the center here. So they're roughly even. One, two, three, four, five, six. That brings us to two inches, whoops. Come on, pen, don't fail me now. Okay. So we've got marks for five holes. So our center marks are at two, three and a half, and five, and then our other ones are in an inch and a half and a little bit more, right? So let's put those same marks on our next binding line here. So we know our middle one's at three and a half. We've got marks at two and five inches, and then we went in an inch and a half, or an inch, excuse me, and a, an eighth. Okay, so we've got our two sets of marks. Now we need to transfer those marks to our third one here. We'll go, we had three and a half. We had five. 
be at two. And then we went inch or half inch and a sixteen and an eighth, half inch and an eighth. Okay. So these marks, these little hatch marks, are where we're going to poke our holes through. We're gonna poke them through from the back, and then on the front, all we'll have is our holes, which is perfect, because then you won't have little marks and measuring marks and everything on the front. You'll have put all the measuring marks on the back, okay? The other thing that's important to do right now is to make ourselves a punching template for our signatures. And that'll be totally based off of these because that way these holes will line up with the holes we punch through our signatures, right? So we need this, we need this cut down to seven inches, which is how long our signatures are. And then, while I've got it folded like this, I'm going to put it up against, and now realizing that there's got to be a little bit on top and a little bit on bottom, put it against one of these lines where we've got our marks, and then mark, I'm going to mark them right on my template here, my punching template. Now, now we've got our punching template marked. I'm going to open it up and extend those across the middle here, across the fold. Now, I will say, once you've figured this math out, you can use it standard. So, like, this is a 5 by 7 book. So you can keep this, and you could make yourself one of these, and then mark your lines. So do this marking right on here, and then you just know if you've got, and I have a couple of these, which are way over there, and I can't grab them right now. But I'll just say, um, you can keep these, you know, paper clip them together, and just write on here, 5 by 7 book. Five by seven, three signatures. Five by seven, eight signatures, five signatures, right? Um, so then anytime you're doing it, a book, you don't have to come and recreate the wheel. You can just use this again. So that's just a tip and it makes it easier, okay? So now we're gonna use these to punch our holes in our signatures, but right now we're gonna punch our holes with our all through these marks here, okay? So I'm going to um, go right there and I'm just punching my holes, trying to keep it. And you'll notice I'm not, you, the, the more you go up the all, the wider the hole gets. I'm not trying to go too far in because I don't need my, my holes through here to be ginormous. I just want them to be wide enough to put my needle and thread through. Okay. All right, we have all of our holes punched. And if we flip it over, you really, unless you're looking really close, because like I can see, like can you guys even see on camera? Well, kind of. See where a few of those holes are? But that's the lovely thing. You'll see them, I mean, when you're doing this in person, you'll see them, because I can see them very clearly. It's just you can't really see them on camera. This one looks a little small. There. Which is fine, because you. the goal is you don't, want to see them too much. <laughs> so we've achieved that. All right, um, now I'm going to grab out my scoreboard because we want to put some creases in here where it's going to bend on the sides with the fold of the cover. Now, I want to put one crease in along where um, the lines that we have marked is and then I want to put one right next to it and I'll show you why I'll show you why this first time so I'm gonna put I'm gonna create put a crease right on this line here and 
And then I'm going to crease this line right here. Okay, now I'm going to put those folds in ever so gently. And this one. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my cover. So we're kind of mimicking our cover here, right? I'm gonna grab my cover and show you. Let's see, can I, am I showing you? See how it fits just snugly inside there because we measured, right? However, once we get the binding in there and um, there's a little bit of bulk behind there, I want there to be enough flex space here so that the paper, this paper can tend to rip and shred a little bit here. And if it does, don't worry too much on this fold because it takes a lot of abuse right here. If this paper wants to rip or something, you can always fix it with another strip of paper or some washi that, you know, put some fabric or lace there. I've had to do that before because it just, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta fix on stuff like that. Um, but I wanna put another fold in or another score in um, right on the other, just next to that one because I want to make sure that there's plenty of, let me make sure I get right in that center of that one. Oh, UPS is here. Okay, so I'm gonna put another one in right next to it. And what I'm doing is just giving it some flex space, okay? Hopefully it doesn't need it, but I'm just giving it a little bit of flex space. While I do this one, let me tell you. So did I tell you guys that I'm gonna have my brother's and sister-in-law's kids for um, today's Monday when I'm filming this. I think this will go up today unless, you know, tragedy occurs. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to just try to give it another fold. Just here, I'm going to put this away. I don't need this. We're done with that for now. Okay, I'm going to try and give it another fold right on that line if I can. So there's that one. Okay, I'm not trying to fold it hard. I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a crease. Just like I said, to give myself some leeway there. Scoot it up to that next score mark. Oh, now there goes the UPS guy. That's the benefit. Whoops, I keep missing it on the side for some reason. It's the benefit of having my studio up at the front of my office. I can see all the comings and goings. Why can I not get that one on this side? I got it on the other side just fine. This is the reality, guys. This is reality TV. Um, so while I fiddle with this for a second, uh, we're taking my brother's kids for a week while they go on vacation. It's just their anniversary. And so they're going on a vacation and, um, just the two of them and the kids are staying with us, which is awesome. They're great kids. Okay. There, I kind of rounded it up, which is what I was trying to do in the first place. So now we'll see. Now it's just got a little bit of ease room for these corners here. Okay, ease room for these corners. Whoops. We've got our holes punched. We've got our fold done. Now it's time to um, deal with our signatures. So you need to know what order you want your signatures to go in, right? I've had that kind of decided for a while. I like this as the front. I like this as the last page. So we're gonna go this order. 
So I'm going to take my first signature and um, before you go any further with binding, do a quick page by page flip through here because if you've got little things, excuse me, I need a drink of water. It is cold here. It is dry here. <laughs> so if you've got little things you know, in there. You want to make sure that they're centered wherever you want them to be. Okay. Make sure your pages, make sure there's no, um, you know, tags that are doing this, you know, like hanging over like this and then they get sewn in funny. So do a flip through of your signature here. Make sure that anything like this is moved out of the way. Make sure that anything, if you've got things clipped in, you can take those out right now it makes probably makes it easier i you know i'm a glutton for punishment uh like this card that's in this behind this belly band make sure it's not over too far because that'll get sewn into your signature if it is so make sure and like this if this were skinnier or it was if it was shorter we'd want to make sure it was centered or it was at the bottom or wherever we wanted it to be so we're going to make sure everything looks okay. Nothing's hanging out in a weird way. Okay, so we're good. Then I'm going to, don't go and tap it down like this again if you've got little things you just centered. Mine is, doesn't have those, so I don't have to worry about it, but don't go tapping it down because you just centered it. Now open up to the center of your signature and here's where we're going to use our punching template and we're going to put that in the middle and that's going to show us where to punch our holes. Now another thing you have to be careful is you don't just throw these things on you know and uh, expect that the holes are going to go right down through the middle and stuff because See how not everything just lines up there? See how my punching template's over to one side and stuff? If I just went right now and put the put the binder clips on and let it be over here, my punching is gonna go through the side, it's gonna come out over here, and your signatures are gonna be wonky and sit in there funny, and, and um, you're gonna be so irritated because you worked so hard on all of this. Trust me, again, I speak from experience. So what you wanna do is make sure that your punching template is absolutely centered, that your pages are absolutely centered. Then I go like this and I kinda of put two fingers on this side and one, my thumb in the middle. And I go and make sure that all of my pages feel like they're absolutely lined up right into that corner there. And I hold it firmly and put on my first binder clip. Then I put on a second one on this side. And I look, when I fold that, now everything looks lined up and if I punch my holes, they're gonna go right through that, that uh, through where they need to go. Everything looks lined up. Same thing on this side. Now, because we edited these signatures and took them down and made them a little skinnier, this is fairly easy right now. See again, when I fold it like that, everything is nice and lined up. All the folds are nice and lined up and stacked nicely. So when I close my signature, everything's lined up. Okay, so I'm gonna put these down so they're out of our way. Normally I don't do this, but I'm showing you guys how I <laughs> to make it easier. So now we're gonna take our awl and we're going to poke through right through the middle, okay? So I'm gonna get it started here, push it down through and I can feel it's tapping on the back. Then I'm gonna go up like this and I, I literally just have it like balancing on my awl. Because I wanna make sure that my holes, you can, if you're doing this funny, if you're right-handed or left-handed, you tend to push in one direction. I want my holes to come absolutely straight up. Oh, I'm out of frame. I want them to come absolutely straight up through the signatures. So to do, th do that, I go like this and push through from the back, okay? Again, I don't want it to be 
the hole to be too big. Now I have a hole that's coming straight through. So again, I'm gonna start it here. And then if you can see, if I went like this, because I was you know, doing it away from me, if I went like this and pushed it in this way, then I'd end up with a hole when I'm sewing that go, wants to go that way, and it may not line up with my template very well. So I want it to go straight down through my papers, and then I flip it over and make sure that it comes straight up. Do the same thing here. Now just be very careful that you don't poke yourself with your very pokey tool because that would really hurt. Again, I've done that. <laughs> And my last one. Okay, so now we have our five holes punched, right? One, two, three, four, five. Important step, guys. Before you get all eager and bind your book, take your template off. I can't even count on one hand. So I'm going to hold it really tight because now that I've got my holes punched, I don't want the signatures to slide around or move around at all. So I'm holding this really tight right here and I'm going to just slide this off and under and put it right back on. Okay, slide this off, under, right back on. I have bound so many of these things into my books. Luckily, you can usually just kind of tear them off gently. But man, that's frustrating because <laughs> then you have to make a new one because it's always like not on your last signature. It's right on your first one or something. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is um, this is the top. I'm going to mark that right on there. Not that it makes a huge difference because we've got these evenly spaced, but sometimes you're off in a little bit. Or if you added an extra eighth of an inch down here or less of a you know, mark up there, you want them to all go in the same direction, okay? So I marked top. Here, I'm going to put these down again because your sewing thread always gets caught on these dumb things. <laughs> so now we need our linen. I like to leave long, long, because I always like to tie stuff. So I go about this much and then I double that. And uh, sometimes it feels a little wasteful if I cut too much, um, but I'd rather have too much than too little. I'm gonna make my three binding threads right now so I don't have to you know, stop and do the step in between. Okay. Now I'm gonna put those away. I'm gonna grab my needle and thread my needle. And you can either leave it, so like I said, I like to tie little danglies on the bottom. So I like to have my so my threads coming through in the middle of the signature. If all you wanna see is your threads and you wanna hide the strings, then you'd wanna go, um, you'd wanna come up, you'd wanna come up through the middle like this from behind. When we're sewing, pretend like we're going through this, okay? Because then all you're gonna see is that and the strings would be hidden back here. But I want my strings out here, so I'm gonna go down through the middle. I'm gonna put my needle halfway through, then I'm gonna pick up my binding strip, and I'm gonna go with my first set of marks and find that first middle hole. There we go. So I'm in the middle hole of the signature and I'm in the middle hole of my binding uh, strip. Now I'm going to leave myself about, you know, excess long enough here to tie something on. And then I like to try to tuck this underneath here just to keep it out of my way. That's just me, we'll come back to that. So now we're gonna go, we've come through this one, we're gonna go down to the next one 
So the next one right next to it. And then we're gonna, whoops. This is fiddly, guys. We're gonna go to the next one. And then we're gonna go to the next one on our book. And sew it through. And bring it tight. I'm gonna keep these as tight as possible as I go because otherwise you're really messing with trying to get it all lined back up. Now I'm gonna go through this one and find my binding paper and go down. Now we're gonna come back through this hole. This is why I like a blunt needle. If you have a really pokey needle, it likes to split your threads and you do not want to sew through this thread. You wanna sew next to your thread. If you sew through it, then when you go to tighten your book, it's sewn through that thread and you can't tighten it because it's, it's stuck on itself essentially. Okay, so we come up through that one, down through this middle one again, making sure again that we're not sewing through the thread. Okay, so good, so good. Then up to the next one. through this one, and then you guessed it, through the last one. Then through this one again, making sure that I don't sew through my thread. And now we've gone through all the holes twice okay and this last one will go underneath this thread so that first there that's how they meet in the middle and then I just pulled it off my needle now I'm going to loosen this up and get this guy back out and now I'm going to pull them in opposite directions here and most of the time they should all tighten down but now see this one is a little bit loose still so then you had to start going and pulling them individually <laughs> till you get it tightened up. Okay, and you'll know that you want it to be where you where you have it where you want it when you turn it over and go like this, and none of them are wobbly. You don't want any wobble room. Now because we have Tyvek on here you can see none of these holes are stressed, they're not stretching, and I am giving a fairly good tug here. You do want to watch out though with paper on the inside here, right, because if you have very fragile paper right on the inside of your signature it could tear, um, although it shouldn't because the Tyvek should be holding it in place. Once I am good with how secure it is I'm going to tie a double knot. And here's where that waxed linen comes in really handy. It holds this knot really nicely, okay? So now I've got a double knot in there and I've got nice long strings and we have bound our first signature. And it's 43 minutes in, so we're definitely not getting the soft cover done in this video. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'm going to Move a little quicker through this next one. So see, look, it's bound in there. Woohoo! I'll move a little bit quicker through this next one. I'm going to check and make sure all my pages line up and that there's nothing hanging out in weird places. Okay. Good, go to the center of my signature, put in my thing, make sure I'm nice and squared up down here on bottom. And that my thing is way down in the crease, whoops. Geez, that's no good. Okay, I'm happy with that one.
I've got a tab right there, so I'm going to be careful around that. And then I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes. to remove my template. Thread my needle. And start sewing. Okay, so this next one, now you just got to make sure you're going into the right set of holes, right, all the way along. And you can do that by making sure that every single hole you stow is going through that same, um, let me tuck this in here so I don't inadvertently pull it through, right? Oof. Okay, now we're going to go through the next one there. Also, this is a really good time to do a final check before you sew this whole thing in to make sure that this signature is going in the same direction as this signature, because that's another thing that I've done is sewn one in upside down. <laughs> so learn from my mistake. Don't sew a signature in upside down. Making sure I'm not sewing through my thread, just only sewing through the hole. fourth hole again. And then under that first one again. Okay, now I'm going to give it a little pull. Make sure that middle one's a little sloppy. So I'm gonna give it a little pull. Let's see. And I'm going to tie the knot. Okay. So in the it's in the interest of time, I'm going to fast forward through me doing the last signature. If you want to see the process again, I'd say um just go through the first time I did it because I did it slowly then, and watch that again. Here's we got our second signature in. It's bound, it's good, we're good. Everything flips and turns and we're good. Now we're gonna put that last signature in and I'm gonna fast forward.
our three signatures bound into our binding paper. I did notice right here that this must not have been um, glued down all the way. So I'm gonna fix that right now with this because this is just, I can fit this in there rather than trying to get a brush or something down in there. But I'm gonna adhere that tie back. It must not have dried all the way down there very well. So I'm gonna do this just to re-strengthen it. Um, so we've got all of them bound in and my camera says I'm at 55 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is leave it at this for today. Um, and then I'm gonna make a second video. I'm just gonna go right ahead and film right now and do the bind the soft cover journal. And I'll probably just post both of those in the same day here. Um, so that, let's here, I'll show you what it looks like in here. There we go. So see these little glue in, we'll glue this in. And there we go, that's what it's looking like so far. So I'll, I'll go do, and then that'll be our end paper. So that's what you'll see on the inside cover there. Nice liking it okay so i'm gonna go um i'm gonna end this video right here and then i am going to go and make the soft cover one so this is what you should have three signatures sewn in and yeah that's literally where my camera stopped filming user error i figured it out but not until i missed the first half of my next video as well when i'm binding the soft cover one Anyway, guys, I know what I did wrong. It's totally my fault, but I didn't say much important after this point anyway before I figured out the battery was dead. So have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whatever time it is on whatever side of this planet of ours you live on. And until I see you guys next time, take care, God bless, and bye-bye. <laughs>